Thank you all for joining us for CareNet of Southern Maryland's Unbanquet event. Please join me in prayer as we ask for God's blessing this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious God, we thank you for the wondrous gift that is life. Thank you that in your love and your generosity, you have formed us out of nothing that before you formed us in the womb, you knew us, that you have created us and called us each by name. We pray for your blessing on this virtual gathering. We ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us, upon our speakers, upon the staff of CareNet, upon our community of volunteers and benefactors, and all those joining us at home. Lord God, bless the ministry of CareNet and the loving service that it provides. And in a special way this evening, we pray for the culture and the country we live in. We pray, God, for your blessing on all mothers and families, especially those most in need, those who feel hopeless or alone, those in need of healing and peace. Give them courage, Lord. Show them your mercy and love and rouse us to act on behalf of our sisters and brothers. Lord, we place this unbanquet event as we do our lives and all our matters in your loving hands. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hi everyone. I am so glad that you're able to join us for our first ever virtual unbanquet. When we decided to postpone our annual banquet back in March, we could never have predicted the turn of events that COVID-19 would cause. And we certainly had no idea that we would still be holding everything online. So I appreciate you taking the time tonight to be with us and to hear our heart. But God knew all of that was gonna happen and he also knew that you would choose to be here with us right now, open to hearing how your support impacts us at CareNet. For those of you who may be new to what we do, CareNet of Southern Maryland is a faith-based pregnancy center that supports women and families facing unplanned pregnancy. We offer material support such as clothes, diapers, equipment. We also offer parenting classes and healthy relationship education to encourage and empower women that they are not alone. We are also a medical clinic providing pregnancy tests, limited obstetric ultrasounds, and STI testing so that women and men are informed, educated, and feel supported to make a decision for life. We exist so that we can offer grace and hope when women are at their most vulnerable. This helps break down their barriers and allows them to expose their silent fears. This then leads to the increased chance that they would choose life for their unborn baby. Especially right now, we are facing a crisis. It's right here in Southern Maryland. It could be your neighbor, your family member, church member, classmate, workmate. We see everybody. And while COVID-19 didn't cause it, it certainly has unveiled it. Let me explain. Prior to COVID-19, we had approximately four or five phone calls from abortion-minded mothers every week. And while these are difficult calls to take, we love these calls because it gives us a chance to speak hope and life to them. Since COVID-19, we now get approximately four to five phone calls from abortion-minded mothers every day. Every day. Sometimes it's more than that and it's up to 10 contacts from them every day searching for an abortion for a way to terminate their child. While COVID-19 has caused us and forced us to make drastic changes that have seemed devastating, for instance, we've had to significantly reduce our hours in our three centers. We've had to reduce the availability of our volunteers and it's caused us to push back and even cancel our vital fundraisers that we need so that we can continue doing this wonderful work. Even with all of that, there is still so much good that has come from COVID-19, believe it or not. 
Through this process, we've been able to add online virtual options support where we can meet with women online to discuss and educate them on their options. We have virtual parenting classes for those who've already made the decision to parent and helps us support them in that process. And we have added paid online advertising that allows more people to see our ads when they're searching for an abortion clinic. Side note, there have been so many people who have called us because of these ads thinking that they were calling an abortion clinic. But as a result of a conversation from us where we are upfront and honest with what we do, they have agreed to make a, an appointment for a pregnancy test or an ultrasound. And that's only something that God could do. With all of these service, we've, services, we've also added a texting service that allows our staff to be available to women all hours of the day and night to answer their personal questions related to abortion and pregnancy. So with all of this, there's one big change that I think you might have noticed. You might have seen our new Teal Mobile that's been out and about in the community. And that's such a wonderful blessing to have. Back at the beginning of the year, I felt led by God that we needed to have a mobile option that would allow us to transport clients. But God being God knew that a pandemic was about to hit Southern Maryland. The week that we picked the van up from Hilltop Graphics after getting it professionally wrapped, that was the week we had to cancel our banquet for the first time in March. And the following week, because we had the Teal Mobile and we were prepared, we were able to be out in the community handing out essential baby supplies, diapers, wipes, formula, and baby food to those families who suddenly found themselves out of work. They were unable to come to one of our centers. And many of these people had never heard about us before and surely had never stepped foot in a care net center. We have consistently been in the community throughout all of COVID with our Teal Mobile. And as a result, we have impacted families over five hundred times. What? That's so exciting. Oh my goodness. That just makes us so excited to keep doing what we're doing when we see God moving in such a powerful way. We are only able to do these things because of you. And to be clear, we've only been able to do these things because of you. And our work isn't finished, not even close. There is so much work that can be done. And there's so much work that has to be done. Planned Parenthood hasn't stopped. Abortion clinics continue to deceive women, making them believe that by encouraging them to end the life of their baby, that they're actually empowering women to achieve their dreams. But what abortion clinics don't tell women is that that medical abortion, the two pills that they get when they're in the abortion clinic, that still means that they're going to be delivering their baby at home, alone, scared, and in unimaginable pain. What the abortion clinics don't tell women is exactly how far along they are because oftentimes they fail to do the sonogram that would tell you. And what abortion clinics don't tell women is that while the actual process may seem temporary, they're going to be dealing with the shock, grief, and shame for years afterwards, and sometimes the rest of their lives. And you might ask, how do you know? Have you been in an abortion clinic? Well, I know because of the women that we have talked to, the women who have called us right after their abortion procedure in tears, because of the women who have told us their personal stories of how they were lied to, how they felt rushed and deceived when they went to the clinic, because the pain and truth of their experience is real. And because abortion is more than just ending a life, it's Satan's greatest tool to keep women from experiencing the true freedom hope in life that's found in Jesus Christ. But the good news is that because of your support, CareNet of Southern Maryland is here. Because of your past financial support, we have had the savings that would uh, has allowed us to continue to serve Southern Maryland through this crisis. But we're running low. Due to having to postpone and cancel our fundraisers because of COVID-19, we're now operating at a $200,000 deficit in our budget. But with your continued and ongoing financial contributions, we will continue to be here. 
we will continue to offer new and innovative services and support that allow women to see their value and potential, that allows women to believe the truth that they are capable, they are able to achieve their dreams while parenting, and to live in the abundance of all that God wants to give them. I wanna take a minute and introduce Shannon, who's been one of our clients for a couple years. And she wanted to share her story with you so that you could see the impact that CareNet has had on her life. My name is Shannon Quaid and I'm 22. I grew up in Chaptico, Leonardtown area. I grew up with my dad and my grandmother. When I found out I was pregnant, I was just um, just about 19 when I found out. It was early April. I was still in high school. I was fixing to graduate that June. I missed my cycle and I went to the CVS after work and I took a pregnancy test and then I called his father. He said, It'll be okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. My sister guessed, so she kind of knew. His family, it just took them a while to warm up to the idea. There were other family members who were not as supportive. I guess they were in a state of shock. Some of them were saying, why don't you give him up for adoption? Because, you know, it's a lot to take care of a child. It takes a village which it does. My initial thoughts were, how am I gonna take care of this little one when I'm not even out of high school yet? How am I gonna, you know, supply for this child when I have car payment, car insurance, phone bill, all that to pay on, um, you know, minimum wage job. Back then it was 8.75, I was getting paid an hour. I was working at McKay's and Miss Tammy, who works at the CareNet in Lundertown, she told me there's a great place, um, we have resources if you need help. And so I went in and I checked the CareNet out. When I first walked in, I thought, okay, this is going to be another place that, you know, they're going to say, well, you always have options of adoption or other options. And they might be a little judgy. But when I walked in, they were very caring. They said, you know, if you need any resources, we have it. And then they took me to do my first sonogram. And I saw Gavin for the first time. And I just knew I, I couldn't give him up. I received resources, diapers, formula, clothes, which that helped me a lot. It made me feel like I had a security blanket, like I knew somebody was there. There was a lady at the care net. She was very sweet and she, Gavin's first Christmas, she said, we have a bunch of stuff for him for Christmas, so you know, you need to come in to get it. So that really helped out with our first Christmas because it's financially hard to do it by yourself. They made a difference in me definitely seeing that I could do it. You can do it because they have the resources to help you out. They have parenting classes, diapers, wipes, whatever you need to help you. So it's like that security blanket. I'm back on track to go to college. I start classes March 11th, and I'm going for early childhood development. If I could tell a young woman that's having unplanned pregnancy or even a planned pregnancy, the care net is a security place. It's a security blanket for you because they have resources. They have people who are not judgmental in any way. They have people who want to see you succeed and they actually care about you and your child. I just couldn't imagine my life without Gavin. So that caring factor and that, you know, ability to be able to help me 
definitely made me change my mind. Isn't her story just incredible that God would use you to give so that we could be open and her life and her child's life could be impacted? That's the difference that you can make. That's the difference you have made. In the next year, despite the challenges of COVID-19, we want to expand our supports to include the abortion pill reversal. Did you know that it is possible to reverse a medication abortion, otherwise known as Plan B? It is. And all we need to do that here at CareNet of Southern Maryland is a nurse practitioner or doctor who would be willing to act as our secondary physician. That's it. This process is highly effective with a success rate of about 67%. And through COVID-19, we've had a handful of women who have called us asking us to help them. Women who have immediately regretted taking that first pill in the abortion series, desperate to reverse the procedure. Thankfully, even though we didn't have the resources to help them, we were able to send them to an affiliate site in Charles County and Anne Arundel County where they were set up to do the abortion pill reversal. But don't be fooled. The need is here in Southern Maryland. And my desire is to make sure that we are able to meet that need. In the next year, I would also, we are looking to add client transport on our list of services and support. By being able to transport clients to our center, especially with everything that's going on with the COVID crisis, we can target students on the local college campuses who might not have the ability to get to our center otherwise. We can be available to youth who are already suffering the disadvantage of not attending class in their school and being able to gather with their friends, and they can come to our Reef Healthy Relationships program. And we can truly access low-income neighborhoods where there's greater chances and heightened risk factors that increase the likelihood of abortion so that they can feel supported to make a choice for life. And of course, there's added costs that come with this, uh, insurance and gas and that sort of thing. But the benefit of being able to be available to offer truth and honest information during such tumultuous times is more than worth it. Wouldn't you agree? Especially when lies literally hang in the balance. Now is the time. Today's the day, friends. It's your choice. Will you choose to partner with us? Will you choose to continue your partnership with us? And maybe God's calling you to do something more to help further stand in the gap and to help us so we can help those who are around us. Now is the time to arise for the lives of the most vulnerable and their mothers in Southern Maryland truly is in your hands. Thank you again. Thank you for joining us tonight. Stay tuned for a special message from Melissa Odin, our keynote speaker.
Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Odin and I am thrilled to be joining you tonight, even if it's virtually, as we celebrate the life-saving, life-transforming efforts of CareNet of Southern Maryland. In these uncertain times, I know one thing is certain, CareNet is needed now more than ever. Who else in your community is meeting the needs of women and men and therefore children with free life-affirming services like CareNet? Think about that. I often think about how different my life, how different my biological parents' lives could have been if only a place like this CareNet would have been available for my biological mother. I know you wouldn't know it by looking at me tonight that 42 years ago, almost 43, I survived a failed saline infusion abortion. And I know these are not pleasant things to ever hear about, especially on a night like this when we're celebrating life-saving work. But I wanna share a little bit about that procedure with you. My records indicate that I soaked in the toxic salt solution of that abortion for five days, two days longer than what was typical for that procedure, while multiple attempts were made to induce my birth mother's labor. I like to joke I'm a little stubborn and I just wasn't budging. But all kidding aside, the longer I soaked in that toxic salt solution, the greater the likelihood should have been that my life was successfully ended. And of course it should have been. I may never know why exactly that abortion failed to end my life, but what I do know is that the intent for was for my life to be successfully ended and for no one to ever find out that the abortion was forced upon my birth mother against her will by her mother, my own grandmother, who was a prominent nurse in their community of Sioux City, Iowa, alongside the help of a friend and colleague, the local abortionist. I know these circumstances sound dramatic, but if you sat down with Olivia and her staff, I'm sure they would tell you many stories like my birth mothers, where women aren't given any choice. You know, I think we can all agree that what happened to me over those five days of the abortion procedure was horrific. But I also hope that you can agree with me tonight that what was done to my birth mother over that five day period, that was also horrific. That's why we're here tonight, because every child deserves better than what was done to me. And every woman deserves better than what my birth mother has experienced. And that is what your care net is offering, a dramatically different experience where life is affirmed and made abundant, not only for children, but for women. In my case, on the fifth day of that abortion, my birth mother's labor was finally successfully induced and I should have been delivered dead that day as a quote unquote successful abortion. But quite clearly God had other plans for me. And I think we can all celebrate, right? Give him a round of applause wherever we are tonight for what he's done in my life and yours and through the center. And I just wanna be clear, no matter what harm my grandmother intended for me, no matter how she harmed my biological mother, I don't hate her. I don't hate my abortionist. I love them in that radical way that Jesus loves each and every one of us, the way he calls on us to love other people in return, you know, that way that's kind of hard sometimes. I love them and I share that with you because I think that's one of those things that we can always be working towards in our lives, to love people unconditionally. And I love that about CareNet. They are providing unconditional love to the women and the men who come through their doors. They are meeting them exactly where they're at and they are getting to know them and love on them and help them choose life and choose life abundantly for themselves. What an incredible gift that is. And I am thankful that I've been able to love and to forgive because I can tell you I would not be who I am, I would not do what I do if I could not love and forgive my grandmother, that abortionist, my biological parents, and anyone who is responsible for harming me. That's what the catalyst for my mission, I truly believe in life and supporting centers like CareNet, that's how it all has began. And I am so thankful that no matter what demands made by my grandmother to leave me to die after that abortion procedure, I, I know this is not pleasant to hear about. It was my grandmother who demanded that I be left to die. No matter what demands she made, I know that at least one nurse was unwilling to just follow that directive and rush me off to the NICU 
where medical care was provided to me and love offered to me that ultimately saved and transformed my life. I know that because I've been contacted by a nurse directly who was there that day when I was rushed off to the NICU. And I want that for every child in our world, don't you? I want every child to have the opportunity to be loved. I want every parent, whether biological or adoptive, to have that opportunity to love their child. That's the work of this ministry. They allow parents and children this opportunity to love and be loved. The answer is quite simple when we cut right through it. Love is the basis for it all. And for me, I was loved. At the time that I survived that failed abortion, I weighed a little less than three pounds. I weighed a whopping two pounds, 14 ounces suffered from jaundice, severe respiratory problems, seizures. One of the first notations in my medical records even states that I was estimated to be about 31 weeks gestational age when that abortion was forced upon my birth mother. Not the 18 to 20 weeks that the abortionist had written on my medical records. I know the Lord hid the truth about my life. Knowing the longer I stayed in the womb, the greater the likelihood would be that I could ultimately survive. And I'm so thankful for that but he works in a very different way in this ministry, doesn't he? Nothing is hidden. Truth about the options that women are considering are talked about. Information about fetal development are shared. Ultrasound provides a window to the womb where the truth about life is clear. And we know ultrasound makes an impact. Statistics show us that the overwhelming majority of women choose life for their child and abundant life for themselves after they see the truth about the life growing inside of them. Just one of the reasons why the services provided through CareNet are so important. For me, growing up as a child, some of the truth about my life was still hidden. I seemingly always knew I was adopted and I am forever grateful for the gift of adoption and a, an option that everyone can live with. I always wanna be clear about that, right? As hard as that can be as a decision, it is an option everyone can live with. So I knew growing up I was adopted, but I didn't learn of my survival until I was 14 by accident. And as hard as this journey has been, I learned so much about who God made me to be, about how abortion affects us all, about the power of love and forgiveness. And I can tell you I was ultimately, ultimately united with my biological mother. After a long and winding path to being connected with her, she's now a huge part of my life. We even live in the same metropolitan area. My two daughters, Ava and Olivia, know her as their grandmother, Ruth, and they know that as much as abortion has forever changed both of our lives, love and forgiveness have changed it even more. Little could I have known that when I first learned my story so many years ago, that my birth mother was not only victimized by that forced abortion, but she was further victimized by being told that I had died that day at the hospital. She didn't know for over 30 years of her life that I had survived and I was alive and well. I know it's like something out of a movie, isn't it? All the pain and regret and guilt that you can imagine. Abortion doesn't just end a life most of the time. It impacts people's relationships. It changes families and communities and ultimately our nation. I've seen it in her life, in my life, throughout all the work that I do. If you or someone you know has been impacted by abortion, I want you to know this ministry exists to support healing too. I truly believe the key to restoring a culture of life where abortion is unthinkable is healing. For the millions of men and women, extended family members, abortionists, clinic workers who have all been impacted, so please contact Olivia and her team directly or check out their website for more information on post-abortion healing services. My birth mother, Ruth, knows that she is blessed that her child survived and is trying to do something good with the evil that was done to us both. And if she was here tonight, she would thank CareNet for offering the services and support that women need and deserve to make life-affirming options and for being there for healing and support after an abortion has occurred. She would thank each and every one of you as supporters for making their work possible. Through your support of CareNet of Southern Maryland, the lives of women and men like my biological parents are supported and transformed. Children like me are saved and future generations like my daughters live. 
Your investment in this ministry is an investment for generations. Did you ever think about that before? Your gift tonight is leaving a legacy and an investment for generations to come. I know we can't put a price tag on life because every life is priceless, but the reality is that providing life-saving, life-transforming services comes with a cost to this ministry. As you know, the original date of this event was pushed back from the spring, so that has created a gap in the funding necessary to keep the ministry running. And running, they sure have been. CareNet of Southern Maryland has continued to operate throughout this pandemic, serving the community and looking at new ways God can use them to support life in your area. In our new terminology, CareNet of Southern Maryland is an essential place with an essential mission and essential workers. But they can't do this without you. Your support is essential. You are an essential worker in today's world. <laughs> so give yourself a pat on the back. And it's true. Your support is needed now more than ever. And we realize this. So please visit Friends of CareNet. That's Friends of CareNet. S-O-M-D dot O-R-G slash donate to give your one-time gift or your monthly pledge and learn about other ways you can support the ministry. If you don't already support the center on a monthly basis, please consider doing so. Monthly gifts provide stability to this ministry financially. And in times like this, that stability is sustainability. You can text tonight by texting the amount you are giving to 301-383-9737. That's 301-383-9737. Or visit the website to give online. Thank you so much for your time and your attention tonight, and most importantly, your ongoing support of this ministry. Stay well. God bless. Hi everyone. I just want to come back and just say how glad I am that you all were able to take the time aside to be a part of this evening for our first ever virtual unbanquet tonight. My prayer is that through this evening that you have felt God's presence through our speakers and through the special testimony and that you know that he continues to move through you and through CareNet of Southern Maryland to love this community in new and innovative ways. I also hope that you feel compelled to contribute to this vision in a greater way than you have before and whatever that may be, so that you can continue to stand for life with us here in Southern Maryland. To end this portion of our evening, here is Pastor Todd Crawford from Real Life Church in Mechanicsville. But please stay tuned after that for our Q&A session, and it will be with me, our nurse manager, Kara Turing, and Melissa Odin will be answering some of the questions that you have sent to us through this time. Thank you all again. And remember, Ezra 10:4. now is the time to arise, for the matter is truly in your hands. Thank you all. Would you pray with me as we close? Lord, we want to thank you in advance for every sacrifice made, every life saved, every young man and young woman redeemed and restored. And we want to ask that out of your gracious and generous spirit, you will grant favor and success to the CareNet Center. Now, as we go our separate ways, may our hearts always beat for the heartbeat of the unborn, and we will give you praise and thanks. Thank you for this good night. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our living Savior.
Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is our question and answer portion of our virtual unbanquet. So we, we thank you so much for taking the time to be here. My name is Kim Hagen, and I'm going to be moderating. I am also the Leonardtown Center Director at CareNet of Southern Maryland. And with me this evening on our panel, we have Melissa Odin, who is our guest speaker. We have Hi. Olivia Bossert, who is our Executive Director and our nurse manager, Kara Turing. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. So we reached out to, to you, to our donors, to our supporters, to find out what can we answer for you? What questions do you have, not only about Melissa and her story, but also about the work that we do right here in our community? So we, we put it out there on social media. We wanted to hear directly from you guys. We have a great, great list of questions right now. So we're going to go ahead and start. Our first question, Melissa, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and what made you decide to go public with your story? That's a great question. I am probably the first person to admit this is not what I planned on doing with my life. <laughs> I, you know, I was joking with Olivia, I am a very private person. I don't think people would probably believe that about me at this point, but you know, God called me out of my own, you know, my own safe space and um, my place of anonymity. And with a life story like this, uh, who am I not to go public with this story? So, um, you know, it was really just a calling of God that brought me forward with my story. Started when I was 14 and found out my survival story. And as I healed and offered forgiveness to my biological family, you know, that really uh, empowered me. And so that's what ultimately led me to share my story for the first time about 13 years ago. And now I've just been so blessed to be able to use my life to support ministries like your CareNet and organizations around the world. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think God has completely used your story as your testimony and to share with other men and women um, just about, about the nature of this all. So we, we thank you for sharing that. Um, our second question, along kind of the same lines, what would you tell a young mom who's facing an unplanned pregnancy? What, what would you want her to hear right now? I think my message is very similar to what you share through your center, and that is, you know what, circumstances can change. Circumstances in life can change, right? And there are people who are there to support you. That's what you all are doing every day. You are providing unconditional support and information and choices and resources. And women need to hear that, that your circumstances can change. There are people who will support you and you don't have to do this alone. I think sometimes it's easy for us to think maybe the solution is, you know, so grand and it is in some ways, but it's this very simple thing, right, of saying, we're here for you. Mm. That's huge. Yeah, I love that when you say, we're here for you, that it's a simple thing. That's, that it speaks volumes. It really does. Thank you. Melissa, what would you like to see pregnancy centers do in the future? <gasps> oh, that's a great question. You know, I think if people have been involved with your center and supported you for a long time, they'll see that you have continued to adapt and change over time, right? In terms of, you know, adding ultrasound and going medical, adding STI testing, right? Whatever it is that meets the need of your community. And I think, you know, for me, that is the most important thing a center can do is know your community, know the needs of the women and the men and the children that you are serving and adapt to meet those needs, right? That's why every center looks a little bit different. Yes, there are best practices that we should follow, but I love when I see centers like yours knowing what you need to do and changing to meet that need. Mm. And certainly with COVID, we have had a lot of change, <laughs> which brings us to our next question. This question is for our nurse manager, Kara. Kara, what growth and what change have you seen at CareNet? And what would you like to see in the future? Um, we have just changed a lot. And we have, as Melissa was just saying, we've adapted. We've just always been trying to 
be doing better, doing excellence inside of our community, and how can we serve our community better? Um, we have hired a new nurse within the last year. We're trying to expand our medical clinic. Um, that is always the goal to, to be able to expand our medical clinic so that we can reach that one more mom, that one more couple who just needs that help, who needs a listening ear, who needs the supplies they, they need for their baby to be able to keep that baby. Um, so we are trying to expand our medical clinic with personnel, with our different resources. We were blessed with ultrasound machines last year, um, which has been a huge blessing and, um, trying to expand our STI clinic as well. We've opened it up in Calvert and we're trying to keep that going. Um, and just, we are always in need of those volunteers inside the medical clinic. Um, and that next level of expertise, whether you're a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, radiology, whatever your um, expertise field is, you can help Karenet in some way. I guarantee you can help us. And we are always looking for that person who is willing to serve the Lord, who's willing to serve their community, and who's willing to uh, share the gospel and share the truth that with these women, that they are capable, that they are made for this, that they they are loved and their baby is loved, their family is loved, and we just need more people to help us do that. Yeah, thank you, Kara. So you mentioned STD testing, and this leads into our next question. How does ST, has SDI testing, how does that fit into the vision or the mission of CareNet of Southern Maryland? Can you describe that a little bit for us? Yeah, it's that's an interesting question because at first, probably when you look at it, it you might not think it really fits because one part of CareNet's mission statement is to be there for that unplanned pregnancy. However, the next part of our mission statement says, and related issues. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband and I often tell each other, we're playing chess, not checkers. And so we have to look at the big picture of everything. We have to see, as Melissa was saying, adapt and see what's next and how we can help and what we can be doing better. And I think STI testing fits into that because Unplanned pregnancies happen because people are doing things they shouldn't be doing. STIs usually happen because people are doing things they shouldn't be doing. So if they're going out and having sex, most likely at some point that man probably is going to end up getting somebody pregnant, an unplanned pregnancy, and if he has come to us and had STI testing, then he knows that we can also help with that unplanned pregnancy. And that's where we try to really tie it all in together. Um, it might sound odd that we do test for the men, but again, that is our hope is that we can just open one more door so people know we're here. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, CareNet is just full of wonderful people who love the Lord, who are followers of the Lord. And we're told to love God and love others and go and make disciples. And that's also what we're doing inside of CareNet is we're loving others and we're trying to share the gospel with them and share the truth with them of who the Lord Jesus Christ is and how much they are loved and how much he wants to love them and be accepted by them. Awesome. I love that. Absolutely. Um, Olivia, this next question is for you. What do you see as CareNet's biggest need right now? And how will money be used? Those are really good questions. And I know that a lot, you know, this is our fundraising event. This is supposed to be our biggest fundraiser of the year. And with all of the challenges of COVID, um, definitely our biggest need is, is financial. But in addition to that, I would just ask that I want you guys to understand the spiritual component of what we do. Um, everything that we do is for the abortion-minded woman. And when you're dealing with, with that particular set of issues, it is, it is uh, emotional and it, very spiritual, but very emotional for our staff and dealing with each woman in their specific scenario and situation that they find themselves in. Um, and so, and it's, it's also, there's a lot of hurdles that that woman has to go through in order to be here. She has to find us. She has to be willing to put herself in a position um, where she's learning from us and, and telling her story to us so that we can help her. And so I just asked 
before anything else that you guys pray for us, that you pray for my staff, you pray for those conversations, you pray that those women find us. I can't tell you, I said this in my speech earlier, I can't tell you how many women have called us, especially through COVID, thinking that they were calling Planned Parenthood and they ended up coming here they found us coming here instead and getting a pregnancy test and ultrasound. And we want that to happen more and more and more. And the more support that we have, um, the more prayer support that we have, um, the greater work we can do. And so, um, but then aside from that, obviously is, is financial. Uh, we have four major fundraisers that we do every year. And at the, because of COVID, we have uh, been limited in what we've been able to do in the community. And so as of right now, we are about 200,000 short of our budgeted goal for the year. And so um, that money, even though our, our, um, ser our not our services, but the, the our centers, the hours that we're open and able to support the community, um, we're at 30% capacity um, in our other two centers in Leonardtown and uh, Lex in Leonardtown and Prince Frederick. Um, but our expenses are still the same. And if anything, our expenses have increased because we have been doing more and more um, support and offering uh, virtual virtual support for our clients. And so um, your money that you donate tonight is going to help replenish the reserves that we've had in place so that we could stay open through COVID, that we could continue to support this community through COVID um, and all of the new ventures that are um, coming down the pike. And earlier, Kara kind of alluded to it in what she was saying earlier, but in my speech, um, if you guys heard it, um, we talked about wanting to do abortion pill reversal. And so that's a big thing that we wanna do in the next year and offering client transport um, to get clients here to this center uh, and have our services accessible to them. And so there are things that we want to do that we can only do if you guys catch the vision and uh, choose to stand with us. Thank you, thank you. So Olivia, you mentioned um, abortion pill reversal and I, this next question for Kara, what services does CareNet offer for those who take Plan B? And maybe a follow-up to that or before you can maybe go into a little bit about what Plan B is for those that do not know what it is and um, what we hope for the future of CareNet as Southern Maryland. Absolutely. Um, so Plan B, emergency contraceptive, when someone, you know, is worried that they might be pregnant because they've had unprotected sex or whatever the, the case might be, they can take that plan B emergency contraceptive, um, several different, you know, names for that. Um, but the thing with those pills are usually there's two pills. And so if a woman decides, you know, she made the wrong choice by taking an emergency contraceptive, she can call a hotline, um, to be able to speak to somebody to try and reverse the effects of um, the pill. And so what we're working towards at CareNet of Southern Maryland is becoming one of those centers that offers the pill, the reversal pill for those women who have regretted their decision. Um, so right now there are, you know, centers around Maryland that do offer it, but nobody strictly down here in Southern Maryland. So we're trying to offer that to be available to women. Um, we need some more help in that area. Like I mentioned, we do need some, uh, whether it's another doctor, uh, physician assistant, nurse practitioner, somebody who can come alongside of us and really work with us in this. Um, and um, as we start educating ourselves, as we start um, building up that program. But our goal is to be able to be available 24-7 for these women who um, just need to talk, first of all, but also if they do uh, meet the qualifications to be able to take the reversal pill, that we can step in, be there, walk hand in hand with them, um, pray with them, encourage them, and just sit with them too, because it's a scary time. They're terrified, they're upset, they have no idea what's going on, and we wanna be there for them. We want to be able to speak truth into them, we want to be able to um, love on them, and just remind them um, that it will be okay, no matter what the outcome is, that we still love them and that God still loves them. Um, so we are definitely working towards that. Um, and 
if you can help us in any way, we would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Kara. Melissa, this next question is for you. What would you tell a young woman who has had an abortion? There's so much I would say. You know, first of all, I want to say in terms of, you know, Kara discussing the abortion pill reversal, I can tell you that I see the hope happening every single day when centers are providing abortion pill reversal support. We have survivors in our network of the Abortion Survivors Network who are surviving those reversals. So I get to see those, um, those successes, those hopes. And, you know, I love that Kira said, no matter what happens, those women are going to be told that they're loved. And that's my message to any woman who's had an abortion, any man that's been a part of it, um, former clinic workers, right? Abortionists. I want people to know that there is no one in this world that we can lay eyes on that God doesn't love, right? I don't know if everybody has ever seen that quote, but you know what? We'll never set eyes on someone that God doesn't love. Mm -hmm. And so if you are that woman or that man that's been involved in an abortion, you are loved. Just as much as I love my biological mother and father, you are that love too. And this center exists to provide that love, to provide that hope, to allow you to find restoration and redemption in your life. So I want people to take advantage of those services that you offer. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Melissa, what do you feel is the biggest threat for pregnancy resource centers right now? Ooh, I love these questions. <laughs> these were your supporters who came up with your questions. They're awesome. Uh, greatest threat. You know, certainly I know COVID is a huge financial hurdle. You know, the good news is I, I have every hope in the world that your supporters will be able to help you replenish those reserves. Um, but certainly we know that COVID has created circumstances that are financially a hurdle for you and they're burdensome to the women and the men and the, the children that you serve. Uh, but I think the other huge threat, honestly, is the abortion industry. Uh, we know that there is a very lengthy history of the abortion industry fighting against pregnancy centers, trying to shut you down, trying to force you to do things um, that are against your beliefs. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves and say that threat still exists and it will probably um, heat up. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, Kind of along those lines, Melissa, would you share just a little bit deeper um, or dig a little bit deeper and let um, our donors and supporters and anyone watching here just a little bit about how you found out about um, your birth mother seeking an abortion for you? Yeah, that's kind of the complicated part of my story, right? Uh, people know I'm an abortion survivor, but there's so many questions. And I now know um, that my birth mother was forced to have that abortion. So grew up knowing I was adopted, but ultimately found out my survival story when I was 14. And I think like so many people, right, when you've experienced something traumatic or there's a family secret, uh, it can take decades to unravel that story. And so I didn't find out that the abortion was forced upon my birth mother until Oh, 2013, that's when a member of her family reached out to me. And so that's how I learned it was forced. My grandmother, maternal grandmother, was responsible for forcing it, uh, had monitored that abortion, came face to face with me and demanded that I be left to die. Um, and then that's when I found out really the biggest secret. And that was that my birth mother had spent over 30 years of her life believing that I had died. She was not told that the abortion had failed. They had told her that it was successful. She didn't know if I was a little boy or a little girl. And she lived with regret for over 30 years of her life. And, you know, to me, that's the one thing in my life I would change if I could. I would change that for her. I wouldn't change who I am. I wouldn't change who God made me to be, but I would change her suffering. Um, but the beauty for me now is seeing that she's starting to heal right now that she knows that I'm alive and I love her and I have forgiven her 
And I get to see her growing stronger every single day. You all will see her very soon. Uh, we did an interview about a year ago. Uh, I literally sat down and interviewed her. And she was brave enough to let me do that. And just because of COVID and everything happening, we haven't released the video, but we're preparing to do it very soon because the world needs to hear her story. Wow, the world does need to hear her story. We're just so grateful for you, Melissa, that you can share with everybody just what you have been through and how God has you know, brought you through what you have. And, and I love that you called it your survivor story. That's really, really special. Um, Olivia, this next question is for you. How has the community's needs of CareNet changed because of COVID? Well, that's the question of the day, isn't it? Um, thanks to COVID, we've been forced into uh, new territory and, uh, you know, albeit kicking and screaming at some points, but um, there's been a lot of good that's come out of COVID, but the biggest needs and things that we're seeing, you know, the push in the community is that everything is virtual. Everything has to be virtual. Um, access to services um, has to be easy. It has to be um, uh, accessible and uh, everything is happening online. And so if you're, if you don't have an online presence, then people aren't going to come to you. People aren't going to know about you. And this is just generally speaking. And so even more so for, for us as a pregnancy center, um, trying to reach those, those women and, and meet those needs. It's, we're not seeing, we're seeing people come for material support, but uh, by and large, we're seeing um, the people who are contacting us are contacting us because they're seeing our online advertising um, because they're searching for an abortion. They're searching for, um, help because they think they're pregnant um, and then we just pop up in the, the, the you know with the in the search menu um, in the listing for the ads and that's that's fantastic um, and it's it's incredible to see we've seen an increase of about 45 percent since we've started um, doing the online advertising of the the converting of people who are finding us um, and going to our website as a result of seeing our ads and then therefore contacting us. Um, so it's exponential growth and um, tells us that we're doing the right thing. But it also tells us that the way that we were pre-COVID is no more. And um, so we have to do more to be accessible and to uh, provide these services in a way that our clients can get to them. And so that's why you're seeing a big push for um, and I've talked a little bit about um, providing more online support and options support um, virtually. Um, Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics, they're offering the abortion pill and not even seeing clients and patients in person and sending the abortion pill to them at home. Um, you can get the abortion pill on Amazon um, and they, they're calling it Plan C now, so you don't even need a prescription. So it's all super scary stuff that's happening to these women and they don't have truth and they don't have hope. And we need to be there. We need to be there when they're alone, when they feel vulnerable and when they are prone to make these decisions that um, they're going to deal with the consequences of for the rest of their lives. Um, you know, our the advertising that we're doing, it's costly, but again, the women that we're helping, like you can't, you can't put a price on life. We're all valuable. Um, every child, every mother that we see is valuable and made in the image of God. And so um, just to break it down, the, we pay about $1,100 a month for the online advertising that we're doing. And that's about $30 a day, $30 a day for the chance that that one person who is searching for an abortion clinic would find us $30 a day for a chance at saving that baby and offering hope to that mother and ultimately offering the hope of Jesus Christ. And that's, that's why we're here. Right. Um, and, and if we don't get them to our center, we have no, no chance of having that conversation with them and providing that hope. Um, the virtual support that we're offering. Um, there's also a charge, a cost to that. Um, and it's, uh, 
you know, we're doing our parenting classes online. Um, our, our schedule is book solid with parenting classes. Kim, you can speak to that because you're, you do them. <laughs> um, and so that's about with the parenting support that we offer and the options and online support that we're offering, where we have the resources to, to text um, and to be available 24 hours a day to these, these clients and these women. Um, that is about just under $200 a month, which is about $6 a day. So $6 a day, if you pledge that amount, if you commit to that amount, um, that's allowing us to be there in the moment when these women need us, when they don't have anyone else that they can turn to. Um, you know, we ultimately, the push is to move forward, to, to, to move forward with the virtual support that we can offer. And we're excited. There are options out there, um, programs for us to utilize. And uh, it's exciting to see women find us to hear their stories. And um, I, even if COVID were to be resolved tomorrow, I don't think that this would be something that we would go back from. Um, this is something that we're going to continue to do because uh, the results of it is yielding life. Absolutely. Truth and hope. That's all what it's about, being able to be there to offer truth and hope. Well, I just wanted to take a moment. Thank you so much to everyone that joined us live for this Q&A session. And a special thanks to Melissa and Olivia and Kara for being on our panel. Thank you so much, everybody.